Today we are going to learn how to grow potatoes like this one. This is some of my potato or one of my potatoes that is still left over from last year. And if you watched my harvest videos, you know that this is pretty normal for me to grow them of this size. And I have failed every single time to tell you exactly how I do it. But this year is the exception. I'm gonna show you exactly what I do to grow these monsters. Okay, rule number one is chitting. Now, this is not chitting done on its finest. This is chitting from my pantry in the basement, my cold room in the basement. But what I would do is I would leave these on. I know they're overgrown. Think about how much energy your potato put into making these stems and then consider how removing them would not be to your advantage. I know people often do, just I don't, I leave them. But what I do wanna aim for is proper chitting and I'll insert some photos of what proper chitting looks like. Now you're probably like, Ashley, well, how are you gonna plant yours? Yours are not chitted properly. I'm not gonna plant mine today other than to show you what depth and how I do it for my Americans and the people in Canada who are not borderline subarctic. I actually don't put my potatoes in until mid-May, sometimes depending on the weather, the end of May. This year, I think I'm gonna get in mid-May, but yeah, I have to wait a while, but I'm gonna do these for, for you guys. So I'm gonna leave these on, but to chit, the, what I do is I will take a pan, and if you are in a cold climate right now, is a great time to start chitting. Um, two weeks-ish before you are getting ready to put these outdoors. So what I like to do is I just take a, uh, a pan. You can put soil in this, you can put paper towel, vermiculite, a little bit of water even would work. And then all you're gonna do is set your potatoes in. Now you don't wanna put them in like broad daylight, but I will put them on the bottom rack of my greenhouse. And over time, these will make really nice snug kind of nodules, which will benefit you greatly. Okay, so next up, people often will subdivide these potatoes. So they will say, oh, you just need one to two eyes per section. I actually leave my potatoes whole so I don't cut them, I don't do anything with them, and I plop them in. Normal, I won't, like I said, subdivide them. The smaller ones in particular, I won't subdivide. That larger one that I do need to chit before I can plant, I would cut in half, but I would do the cut in half portion after it has done its chitting process. Is that a verb? I don't know. I don't even know. One thing I will say about using your own potatoes is make sure that you didn't have any blight from the year before. You'll know if you have blight. If you do, get some seed potatoes from the store because these are seed or these are disease free, which obviously is beneficial. I know mine are disease free, so that's why I'm going to use mine. But if you have blight, please restrain yourself from using them. So next up is actual soil prep. Now, you can do these in containers. You can do them in cardboard boxes. I did a little snippet of that over on Instagram if you follow me there. The key here is to have really light, fluffy soil. Now, I'm doing mine in actual physical soil, but again, the key here is light and fluffy. You want next to no restriction on that potato. So I'm going to bring the camera down to show you what state my soil is in before I plant these. Okay, so you can see that my soil is uh, pre-tilled and by pre-tilled, I mean my dog decided to do some damage to it. So step one is actually removing any mulch that may be in the system, like I said, this was a mulch bed that my dog decided he needed to rototill for me. So my mulch is just, <laughs> it's inside of my soil at this point. So I usually plant a ton of these, so I won't dig out a hole necessarily to this capacity, but I go about half a spade down. You could go a full spade. I do one potato per hole, and then the soil I put back in place is gonna look like this. So it's gonna be very, granular with next to no aggregation in it. And I will actually even take the time to break it up physically with my hands if I know that my soil is somehow aggregated. Okay, so this is just set on. I do a light tap, but that is it. And now I wait. If you were doing these in containers, I would actually encourage you to only fill the container halfway, for example, if it was like a five gallon bale pale bucket and then actually put the potato in, cover it up with a little bit of soil. 
this is where it's a big, it makes a big difference for the potato. So I'm gonna let this guy grow. I will use just a regular fertilizer. I, I usually use something really low in nitrogen. And in some cases I use nothing at all. I mean that in regards to like compost and manures as well, because any excess makes, I find <laughs> you get a lot of green, not a lot of root. So I do try to keep, you know, fertilizer away from these guys as much as possible. If I had to choose a fertilizer to apply low nitrogen, higher phosphate, higher potassium. Now, I'm gonna leave these guys and eventually I'm gonna get a little bit of a plant that's gonna stick up and you'll get two or three leaves. I'm going to hill those two or three leaves. Then I'll get a little bit more and then I'm going to hill it again. And by hilling, it simply just means piling dirt up on the sides. Now, you want to make it big enough that the hill isn't necessarily just on top of that little plant. You want it to be kind of the size of your original hole almost. And that is part of the reason why I do have a little bit of a depression in there because then I can see originally how big that hole was. Once I do this, I do it about three times. You can do it as many times as you like. You just leave it and then as the season goes on, you can actually feel how big your potatoes are getting because that is such a nice light fluff. You just put your hand in and you can feel around. The entire time that this is growing in ground, do not walk on your soil. Do not walk anywhere near your soil because that will compact it again and that is not what you want. So leave your potatoes by themselves. Don't walk on it. Don't let animals trot all over it. Keep it very segregated. If you need to fence it off to keep people off of it, then do so because you don't want to go in there unless you're weeding. And if you are weeding, using uh, two by fours or boards and or spacing things out far enough in regards to rows to make sure that you're not snapping anywhere near those original plots. That's literally all I do for those monster sized potatoes. Let me know in the comments down below what the biggest potato you have ever grown is. Mine was 1.4 pounds. It's my biggest ever and it was like the size of my head. If you found this video helpful, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.